everybody, and welcome to another Agile IT Tech Talk. I'm your host, Sean Spicer, and uh, today we're going to be talking about Microsoft Compliance Manager. Um, today also marks two years since we shifted the way that we did Tech Talks and started moving more to a demo-oriented Tech Talk and started sharing them on YouTube. And I'm super happy to announce that this week we will be launching our new Clearly Cloud podcast. Um, we'll be dropping a new episode every Sunday at midnight on all the major podcast networks, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube, iHeartRadio, any place you get podcasts, we're gonna be there. Um, our first guest is Director of External Affairs at Microsoft, David Pryor. We did our interview with him yesterday and I just finished the mix down a few minutes ago. This is gonna be awesome. He was talking about the um, five-year battle to pass the Cloud Act um, and it goes to the Supreme Court. Um, spans the entire globe. It was really, really a compelling conversation. Um, so I'm gonna be doing another series on compliance now. You've probably heard me talk a lot about CMMC, the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification that emerged in January as the new guidestone for DOD contractors. Um, earlier, this month, earlier this month, it appeared in the first federal contract and it was a government-wide federal contract, um, even before it started appearing in defense contracts. So um, the GSA STARS-3 contract is a $50 billion IT contract meant to support disadvantaged businesses and expand the original STARS-2 uh, into things like machine learning and AI. Now, this was shocking to see CMMC appear, th appear there because all indications was that CMMC was just going to be DOD contractors. There was no expectation that it was going to spread out. There were some people saying, oh, yeah, if this works out, this is probably going to replace um, NIST 800-171 in terms of cybersecurity frameworks. And what's interesting about CMMC is that it's an actual certification. Um, it, you no longer attest. It's no longer POEMs and SSPs. You have to have an audit in order to win a government contract. Um, and for this to appear in a general federal contract um, really caused a stir. So I'm going to go through Microsoft compliance functionality again, and I'll also likely be in a series of demos on meeting CMMC level one controls afterwards. So CMMC is broken up into five levels. And I jokingly say that level one is, hey, have a password. Um, so this will be a three part session, and I'm going to begin with an overview of compliance manager a session on data governance and information protection, and finally, a session on e-discovery tools um, and retention. So let's go. So I wanna begin by discussing the shared responsibility model. Um, we are an AOSG contractor or an AOSG partner with Microsoft, which means we can provide GCC High, which is Microsoft's copy of the DOD environment, which is more secure. It features data sovereignty inside the US, only cleared um, and security clearance um, background checked individuals are allowed to work in these data centers is completely separate and completely different than commercial and then normal GCC. Um, and when we're onboarding clients, there's the question, well, okay, now we're in GCC high, are we compliant? Well, the answer is no. Um, even though it's the only place where you can meet CMMC level three, four, and five, or meet ITAR requirements, uh, international traffic and arms regulations. And I wanna talk for a minute about the shared responsibility model because it's gonna come up a lot as we go through Compliance Manager. What's great about Microsoft and well, AWS even, is that as you move from having on-prem infrastructure where you have to handle everything from the networking all the way up to the individual applications, when you move to infrastructure as a service, you no longer have to deal with the virtualization, the servers, the storage, or the networking. When you move up to platform, all you have to deal with is applications and data. And with software as a service, which Office 365 is, you don't even need to worry about that anymore. You no longer have to update um, your portals. You don't have to update your software. It's just happening automatically. But above this, in terms of compliance, there are additional things like documentation. There are security policies that need to be put in place. And what's nice about Compliance Manager is it's very forward about showing you which controls, and this applies to NIST 800-171, this applies to HIPAA, 
what controls Microsoft is managing for you. Um, so let's take a look. So Compliance Manager helps us manage compliance all from one place. And as you can see here, we've got Office 365. It also will watch Azure for you. And you can do multiple frameworks. So here we've got NIST 853. We've got HIPAA. It also does GDPR. Um, there are controls for CCPA, the California Consumer Protection Act. Um, so really, no matter what industry you're in, whether you're working with governments, healthcare, it, you probably have some sort of compliance framework that you're regulated by. So here we get, just like in Security Center, we get ongoing risk assessments on the cloud, we get actionable insights, and then we get streamlined compliance processes. So this is the Compliance Manager dashboard. It gives a summary of current data protection and compliance situations. Um, so in this case, we are going to once again pretend to be uh, Contoso, and we're going to be Compliance Officer Alan DeYoung. He's been sales. He's been an engineer. Um, I think he was a doctor at one point. Um, but within Compliance Manager, Alan can perform risk assessment on Microsoft Cloud Services using this dashboard showing their compliance scores. And from this dashboard, we can see that some controls are implemented by Microsoft, and some are expected to be managed by the organization. So let's go ahead and take a look at the GDPR controls here. So what this does is it breaks it down into, um, here you'll be able to see what cloud services are available. So Office 365, Excel, Azure, um, and then we've got Microsoft managed controls and we can see what the assessments are. <clears throat> so this gives details on what controls are managed by Microsoft. And we can see, well, if I can find my mouse, we can see the corresponding certification requirements, the description of the control and the status of the control. Um, what's also nice is because this is part of the service trust portal, this allows us to get documentation in the event of an audit to show that these controls are being met. Um, so here you can see control 6101 um, when we do um, CMMC. CMMC is not in Compliance Manager yet. Uh, we advise anybody who is seeking to get there um, to just work on NIST 800-171 since that makes up the bulk of CMMC level three. Um, so that control ID is actually mapped directly to the GDPR article. So you can search for that and search within that article and find the actual control. Um, we can also expand and we can see what actions Microsoft has taken and we can see what the test plans are. And this gets really in depth. And so if you're looking an auditor in the eyes and you're trying to say, hey, I don't need to worry about my information transfer policies, this is already managed. This is baked into the environment that I'm operating in. Here is your documentation on that. Now there are also customer managed controls. So let's look at security since we looked at that there. And now you can see 611.1. Um, the customer managed control section also provides control details, but it's also going to give you actions on what you're supposed to do. But what's really great is that you're able to put in your own details and store your documentation here. So this tells you what you need to do for the regulation. It's not just like Security Center where it says, oh, hey, let's go ahead, uh, like Azure uh, Security Center that we went over last week or the week before, where it just says, hey, make sure you don't have global admins doing day-to-day -day work. Um, this goes into what the standard is and why the standard is important and then how to implement it yourself. And then it goes deeper into how Microsoft works with you to do this. Um, as well as having links to all of the documentation you need to find out more. It can still be a really daunting process. If you are looking for compliance, uh, we are happy to help. Just feel free to reach out to us. So we can use this tool 
to communicate needs or actions that need to be taken. So we're going to go ahead and we can assign this and we're going to assign it to Patty Fernandez. And we want to set the priority. Let's go ahead and call it medium. And then we can give notes on what needs to be done. And then we assign. Now, Patty is going to get a notification in email. This can also be set up with controls to go into Teams. But by default, Patty is going to get an email notifying her that this has been assigned. Um, she, she will have access to Compliance Center. There are different roles. So you can have Global Read, Global Write, um, or specifically to individual controls, um, or specifically to assigned users. So Patty has gone ahead and implemented the control, and then she reassigns it back to Alan for him to review it. And then he can go ahead and upload relevant evidence. So here we can see we've got Patty as assigned, and then we're gonna manage documents, and we can upload the documentation that we have for that. So again, six months, 16 months, three years down the line, well, you should be reviewing this a lot more than three years, but generally it's every six months to a year, depending on your industry. You have the documentation and you also have the rolling changes of the documentation um, in order to provide that proof that's gonna be needed for an auditor. So now we can go to implementation status. It's no longer planned, it is implemented. And we can just go ahead, put the date that it was implemented. And when it was tested. And have a test result. And as you can see, because there are different implementation statuses and different test results, you can go ahead and really work through the process in a very in-depth manner. Um, so let's go back to the dashboard. So here we can see, we've had this updated on customer managed action, and we can see the GDPR control and other related controls in NIST and ISO are implemented. So we were working specifically in this GDPR control. However, the great thing about Compliance Manager is that it recognizes where controls overlap between frameworks. So by meeting that one control in GDPR, you can see that we also have managed to meet a control in NIST 853, as well as ISO 27001. And for our auditors, we can go ahead and export to Excel. And this can be provided to auditors to give evidence uh, on all the control details, as well as links to the evidence that's been collected. So I know that this is a really high level overview, um, but I really just wanted to show off how the controls work across each other. And when I said earlier, when you're looking at the potential of needing to meet CMMC level one, or CMMC level three, and to focus on the NIST 800-171 uh, controls, by meeting those controls in Compliance Manager, when CMMC does become available in Compliance Manager, those controls that you've already met will already be knocked out. You can go right in there, you can do the export, and have those controls ready for audit. You'll also be able to identify the additional controls that are necessary, but again, until CMMC appears, in Compliance Manager, work on NIST 800 If you are in another um, regulated industry like healthcare and you need to meet HIPAA, this is a great place to collect your information. It eliminates the need to have those third party um, documentation systems, but it also, its shortcoming is that it is limited to security controls. And it, there's no training in here for HIPAA, which HIPAA does require training, um, but it does have the control. And when you do the training, and so we use a um, training tool for cybersecurity that we go through every year, it's tied into Active Directory and it goes straight in that we have that evidence that, oh yeah, Sean went and completed cybersecurity training uh, at his two year anniversary on April 21st, 
it's taken care of for a year, um, but it will maintain and track that for us in Compliance Manager. Um, so just a reminder, Agile IT Tech Talks are a service for our MSP and CSP clients. We do share these demos up on YouTube for just the general public good. Um, if you do have questions, um, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Give us a like and follow, and thanks for watching. Right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off recording and open up the lines for the general questions from our clients. Thanks a lot and have a great day.